everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Jo, I am Belushi Stitches here on FlossTube and also over on Instagram. And this is my channel about cross stitch. If you're new here, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you find something here that you like. And if you are returning, thank you for coming back. Um, either way, if you do like this video, please do hit the like button, which is the thumbs up below, and the subscribe button if you want to see more and you're not yet subscribed. Okay, so today, as you may well have seen from the title, although sometimes I just let my floss tube kind of subscriptions autoplay, and so I don't even know what's coming next, I just let it roll on. So if you have done that and you don't know what this video is, <laughs> or you have read it and you do know, this is a slightly different video in that I'm going to start um, documenting my Chatelaine journey. I haven't worked on a Chatelaine before, and so this will be my first one, and I wanted to try and document it for myself, um, for anyone who's interested, and then also because um, when I was kit sort of kitting this one up and getting myself ready, uh, and it has honestly been over two years, I, I've been watching sort of everything I can find about Chatelaines, whether that's people doing unboxings of kits, uh, supplies, uh, stitching, stitch with me's, showing off finished pieces, just everything Chatelaine. So I wanted to do that for uh, anyone also who might search for, I don't know, Chatelaine unboxing or Chatelaine supplies or anything like that. Um, because I certainly have really enjoyed watching other people do the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is, using my Kindle, show you which design I've chosen. And you may have seen in the title, it's called Evening in the Park, um, but you may not have seen the design, so I'll be just showing you that one. Uh, then I'll go through everything in my um, kind of kitted up supplies bag envelope. Um, some of that has come as part of a kit, some of it I've sourced myself, and then some of it has come from a friend from a really long way away. Um, and then I'm going to cut my fabric, try and get it on the frame, and make a start. And um, I'm not sure whether my start for the Chatelaine yet will be in this video or it will be in the next video, I'm not sure. We'll see how we get on even getting it on the frame because if it all goes horribly wrong then I won't be stitching it on here. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you is the design that I've chosen. I'm on the Chatelaine website and um, let's have a look in here. My, my Kindle's really slow. Evening. In, this is how slow it is. I think you can find it also by searching for gardens, and there's like a garden section, um, I think. It's this one. There we go. Oh, try and get a full picture. There we go. Can you see? Yeah, not too bad, but I'll bring it in closer. So this is the design I've chosen, Evening in the Park. Um, there are cross stitches, speciality stitches, uh, metallic threads and beads. This is a um, symmetrical mandala, so every corner is the same. Some of the man uh, mandalas on the website are slightly different, or they might be a particular, I don't know, a particular country or a particular uh, tourist destination, and there might be four different sort of motifs as you go around. But this one is completely symmetrical all the way around. So I originally chose this one because uh, well, no, not because. I originally saw it when Teresa Little Stitcher showed it, and the first reference of this on my phone is in, is in January 2021, when I have a screenshot of it, because I was like, I need to go and find this website. So, um, I'm just going to put this down. So, I chose this one, um, particularly kind of the swans, the the emblem on my secondary school was swans and I always think of Swan Lake and um, lovely sort of memories to do with the Swan Lake Ballet. So I've kind of, um, yeah, I kind of felt an affinity to it straight away and I think that's a really good sign that you've chosen the right one if you straight away want to go and buy it immediately. So um, there are others, <laughs> there are others that I found that I really, really want to do next. I haven't even done this one yet, so let's just one step at a time. But there are others that I've seen that are absolutely next. Um, they're just beautiful. This one was the first one that I saw and, I've, uh, and I haven't fallen out of love with it since I saw it in January 2021 and it's now August 2023. So um, I think that's a pretty good sign. I'm just going to pause this one a second and I'm just going to try and find when I actually ordered the when I actually ordered the pattern. So I'll be back in a sec. 
Okay, I just checked my emails. I probably should have done that beforehand. Uh, and I actually ordered the chart in November 2021. So nearly two years ago. And it took me probably 18 months to get everything I needed. Um, yeah. Let's dive in. Okay, so they send you a materials list which I printed off and I would do things like if I knew where I was ordering them from and when and the dates um, so you can see here April 22 so European Cross Stitch are a company in the USA who um, were able to kit up and do kit up some of the Chatelaines if not all I'm not sure um, and for this one when I ordered it at the time um, it required some Gloriana silks and Gloriana silks when I ordered this were massively on back order by 6 to 12 months and so it, European Cross Stitch gave me the option of you could have the whole kit but you'd have to wait for the Gloriana or you could have everything else um, and sort of find your own Gloriana or find your own um, substitutes for them so that's what I went with I went with and knowing how, and knowing that I wasn't going to be um, stitching it one until all my studies were finished, but you know for a really long time, because of that, I knew I might have plenty. Of, I'd have plenty of time to find them if if I wanted to. So, uh, as you can see, I <laughs> I like to tick things off and say how many I need and all those sorts of things. Um, I would like to credit um, Nad's X Stitch here. Because for this particular design, uh, Nadine did a floss tube where she went, she'd finished her piece and she went through all of the um, supplies that she had left. It was really helpful information and over the last sort of two and a half years, I've watched, I've watched her video twice and I've just found it really interesting, really fascinating. So um, thank you very much for doing that video. It was incredibly helpful. Um, and I just loved, I just loved seeing it, seeing all the stuff. So I'm going to work my way through all of the bits and pieces and I am going to sit down while I do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just checking what, what you can see and where. That's fine. Okay, so it all comes like this in my huge bag. That's not relating to it. Just put that over there. Um, so I've bought some floss drops. I've bought these from eBay. Um, I could easily have made some of my own of cardboard, but I just, I don't know, I felt like I really wanted some, um, some really sort of, I don't know, some really nice ones. So I bought some on eBay and I'm going to be putting my bits and pieces on there. I've also ordered some floss away bags so that each individual colour can go in an individual floss bag um, on a thread drop. So I've done that. The first thing I'll do is go through this, which is the kit from European Cross Stitch Company. Okay. Okay, so this is the kit, and I have opened it a number of times, but I've still got the um, bow on there, because I thought it was really sweet. So um, it comes all bundled up nicely. It's so pretty, labelled. You can hear them bees. Uh, so you can undo this one. So all the floss that they send you, and I don't know if this is the same, this is the same as all the ones that I've seen um, on floss tube, is that they come all in individual floss away bags, well not all of them, because for instance these are needlepoint silk, so NPIs, you've got more than one colour in one bag, which is why I've ordered some more bags, so that I can potentially put one colour in each bag, I'm going to see how it goes when they arrive, um, but they then, yeah, so they're then on a, on a ring, so all the floss is here. Um, including Petite Treasure Braid at the back, and all of the beads are in here as well. And treasures. Beautiful. And we've got some where they're really shiny and silky. Um, there's not a huge amount of variegation on this one, so um, I would say that I've decided, and you'll see in a minute, I've decided to try and track down the called for um, floss that the pattern has said 
that the pattern came with. So the pattern says to use Gloriana's or use Silken Colours um, thread X, Y, and Z. So I've tried to track them down. I could easily have not done that, but as I said, because I had enough time, I thought I'd try it. Um, I've seen other people um, say, oh, it's so much cheaper to um, kit some bits up themselves. And I've seen other people say that it, because of all the shipping and things, it took them, it was a lot more expensive to kit it up themselves. So I think all, all you can do is make the call that you want. Um, I've also seen a number of people and in the Chatelaine Facebook group say that they wanted to, in order to do this, they needed to stitch it in, in DMC. Um, and there are a number of people in there that say that said, oh, me, me too, that's exactly what I've done and it's fine. I think these designs are absolutely stunning no matter what threads you use. So if stitching it in DMC is what you need to do to do one, stitch it in, stitch it in DMC, just, just stitch it. It's going to be beautiful. So these are the Needlepoint Silks. Uh, they've got their individual names um, on them. Um, they are 8-ply, 100% pure Chinese silk. And I'm hoping. Um, then we moved on to some of the Karen Water Lilies. You can see this one's kind of pink, pinky blue. It's kind of peachy blue, really. Um, that one's quite a non variegated colour. I know this one's called Graphite. It's quite purple on the screen, but it's very grey, just very dark grey. Um, this is a beautiful colour. Or rather, a bunch of colours. Variegation is incredible in that. Um, this is kind of bluey, pinky, peachy blue. This one's a very. This one's actually very variegated. Um, brown. Again, many different colours in that one. That's quite a set colour brown. Again, once you get some light in them, some silks never look variegated until you start stitching with them. And then I've got some petite treasure braids, got four in here all together, as in four different colours. Um, this one's a kind of purpley silver with kind of lots of speckles. There you go. Really strange colour set. That one's very, just very silver. Uh, so that's the kit floss. I've got the little packet of beads. Wow. There's a lot of this one. A lot of this dark one. Um, this one, this grey one here, is substituted. Um, when the kit came, it was asking for... Um, what was it? I was asking for 512, but I received 545 instead. And I emailed them just to say, um, can I just double check? I'm sure it's perfectly correct and right. Can I just double check that, that, that you meant to send me 545? And they said, yes, absolutely correct. So um, that's fine. And then here are the treasures. Again, they, they need splitting out. But yeah, you've got some, some of these lovely square. They've got... Fancy names. Yeah, cube. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's really exciting. So that's everything that came with the kit. And um, as I said, there were some uh, other threads I wasn't able to get from this kit. So not just Gloriana's, there were some others. So I've sourced them myself. Uh, so I will show you those now. Just to first one to show you are a couple of Gloriana's. I got them from Casa Sanina, Casa Sanina, shop in Italy. Uh, and apologies for the pronunciation, I'm pretty sure that's awful. Um, so this is a Gloriana silk. They're so soft, thick and soft. And light is just bizarre. Um, they're showing very, this one is called Slate Blue. This one is showing very blue, sort of bluey purple on the screen. It's a, it's a teal colour <laughs> in real life. So that one is a teal colour. 
Uh, this one is Roriana Cobblestone. Yeah, it's a bit lighter than that. Lavender Ice. And this is kind of purple, bluey, green. I think there's just some amazing colours in there. So I bought those separately. I know I'm shoving them in a the bag, but um, they'll be fine. So the next ones were some more silks. And these are the Thread Gatherer Silk and Colours. Silk and Colours, which in itself is tricky to search for. Uh, lavender Haze and Blue Cotton Frocks. Oh, there's another one in there. And these are actually pretty. Pretty true to life colours. Oops. These are actually pretty true to life colours. Beautiful. Yep. Um, and I bought those from. Also, I was just going to say um, that on these they said blue cotton frocks you need two, and then lavender haze. Um, they said only one, but if I'm ordering them from abroad, then I might as well order two. So I've ordered two of both. Um, this was from 123 Stitch. Okay, so the next one to show you is a Gloriana Princess Pearl Petite 144 Wood Pond Frost. Um, I found this really hard to find. It's a really strange, um, well, it's called Petite for a reason. It's um, a really strange thin, strange in a good way, thin um, thread. And if I show you in comparison to the other stains that you've seen, you can see that it's very different ply. I have no idea where I stitch it yet, or how to stitch it yet. Um, I'm just going to go with it. But you can see it's really small, really odd in terms of just by comparison to the other skeins. Uh, so for this one, I have to thank Kelly, Animal Instinct, uh, here on Floss Tube, Animal Stitches over on Instagram, um, and Frida from Hand Embroidery Supplies. Um, Kelly found this from their store. There's their website, handembroiderysupplies.com.au. So the shop is in Australia, and uh, Kelly was able to ask them if they had it in stock, they were able to get it. Um, and so thank you, Frida, for this amazing, your amazing help. And Kelly, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't have this. <laughs> I still wouldn't have this if it weren't for you. So thank you also. Um, I can't wait, can't wait to get started on it. Look at it, it's just fascinating stuff. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah, so not only did uh, Kelly and Frida help me with getting some of this Gloriana, they also helped me with getting a particular piece. Just checking my um, address isn't in there. Oh, here's their card, apologies. Uh, so this is Frida, hand embroidery supplies, all the bits you need to know. Highly recommended. The next one that is this whole little pile here, is the Thread Gatherer Silk and Colour Cherub Cheeks. Silk and Colour 149. Um, this one is really hard, and it turns out that this has also been discontinued now. It's a pinky, what's well, pinky peachy colour. Um, it does have some variegation in it. This also came from Frida via Kelly. Thank you both again. Um, and I got this one slightly, I got this one from different places as well. So, so I also had a, uh, an order from Three Stitches in Texas. It's three Stitches. And they were able to send through some Cherub Cheeks. Now they had two different ones in stock. I think you can see by, even though it says Dye Lot and they're the same, I think you can see one by the cards and then the second by the threads that they are not the same dye lot. You can also see 
that they are different. Uh, that's a five yard, these are seven yards. Oh no, that's a seven yard and that's a six yard. So, whoop, so again, all three of these are different. I don't know how well the colour will show up. Um, oh, you can see in the picture actually when I put the dark pink one in between, you can see this one here is far darker than these two. So these are from two different shops. I can put that one down there. And these two over here. Is this the alternative? Yes, this is the alternative. Somebody suggested Shellstone as an alternative to the Cherub Cheeks. And again, because these pinks aren't particularly showing very well, people are not going to be able to see anyway. But these are much lighter than this dark pink one. Just going to see what happens. So the last one to show you is um, Thread Gatherer. Where's my hand? Thread Gatherer, Silk and Colours, Elephant and Castle. And this one says no match, but potentially 3750. Um, so this was a really, really difficult one to find. And uh it was available in a shop okay so this is from inspired needle so i'm just gonna fold this up so that nobody sees my address there we go there we go so this was in april 2022 so again over a year ago um so we've got inspired needle limited in illinois they had a um in the back i don't i can't even remember if this was can't even remember if this was on their website um, but I found a, a skein of Elephant and Castle and it is this kind of um, uh, purple, pink, bright green, blue <laughs> colour here. I went on to the, again, the Chatelaine Facebook group and somebody in there said that on I think it was via Etsy. I made that, I made that up. Hang on. Yeah, so it was on Etsy and um, the Thread Gatherer, I'll just show you this again. The Thread Gatherer, all one word. Again, you can see when I started ordering. Um, so that's, so I first found the pattern in January 21. I ordered it in November 21. And then I really was still ordering stuff six months later in May. Um, but the Etsy, anyway, moving on, the Etsy shop, the Thread Gatherer, were actually, due to popular demand, they started to reprint this one, reprint this one, remake this one. So I ordered a number of them, Elephant and Castle SNC210, and I ordered a number of them, and there are the colours. And I apologise for the shadow, I cannot fix it with the lighting I have. If I turn the big light off, which is creating this shadow from the camera. <laughs> it's so dark, I can't see anything. I can't see anything, let alone you guys. And uh, if I leave it on, then I have a bit of shadow. So I know it's really irritating and I apologize. Um, I'll try, I will try and sort it out. So you can see the colors in this one are absolutely stunning. And it's light and thick. I would say it's a bit more blue in real life, blue and teal, than this looks particularly purple heavy on the camera. I would say that the teal, light blue, kind of has a bit more of a, uh, a hit on it. So you can actually buy this one still from the Etsy shop of the Thread Gatherer, which was a huge delight. Just as a comparator, again, it's similar to Cherub Cheeks. Different shops will just have different dye lots or different aged threads. Um, but I think you can see here, this one is very different. But again, you know, these are these are new. These are newly made. Um, so I will be using these ones. And as soon as I'm finished, I will happily, um, I will happily donate this one because uh, if this is helpful to, for anyone, these colours are. So just stunning and this these this is my favorite one by by a long shot um oh i just love it anyway <laughs> i could just stand there looking at it all day i'm just going to put these away okay i'm just checking i don't think you can see my address in any of it <laughs> which is good 
Um, okay, so onto fabric. The pattern says uh, 16 count here. Pattern says 16 count. And provides you with the stitch count, which is 279 by 279 stitches. And I went with Chromatic Alchemy. Lazarite. Even, I've gone with an even weave. 28 count arrive. When you actually count the stitches, it's about 30 count. 26 by 36 inches. So I need to cut off a square of it to get it in the scroll frame. I hope it'll be okay. And that camera light combination makes this look purple. It's not purple at all. It's very blue. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, actually, I just wanted to show you or just tell you one more thing. <laughs> this pattern, and it does say on this website, so I'm not sharing anything with you, I shouldn't. Um... Oh, I found it. This stitch is on 32 count cobblestone as Weigart linen. There we go. Um, so, where was I going to say? Oh yeah, here. So it says, you received the files in 12 parts as it was published in 2005. Um, this helps you to stitch in bits and pieces and not be intimidated by the size and complexity of this design. Um, parts eight and, not, 8 and 11 are not actually in the pattern because there are just bits, like the parts are in the pattern, sorry, but the numbering of parts 8 and part 11 aren't in there. So you get a slightly different pattern to other designs, my understanding. Um, is that you get kind of here's all the instructions here's all the um specialty stitches instructions and here's some general instructions off you go this is very much part by part interestingly the centerpiece is i can't remember which part it's in but it's on page 35 of 46 or something so it's not you don't start with Let me, I'm going to start with it, but you don't actually start with this centerpiece here. You start with this bluer, bluer section and this sort of pink section square. You don't actually start with this. Um, I'm going to start with this because I think that makes sense and I've checked the, the instructions and it's fine. But uh, yeah, this one, it, this one was sort of released in the, uh, it was a class workshop. My understanding is it was a class workshop sort of thing. And so it's released as parts. Um, so I'm quite like that. I quite like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. Okay, fabric time. See you in a minute. Okay, so I know that I've, I've already counted this fabric, um, literally counting every ten stitches, every ten stitches to see if my fabric will fit. So I already know that this works, but then obviously I folded it up and put it back in the box. So my very crude way of working this out again, because I, I know I've already done it and I'm gonna recheck it again in a minute, is 279 stitches divided by, um, let's go with 15, because it's 15 stitches per inch, is 18.6. So the stitched area is 18.6 inches and on the design had i done 16 count or 32 count then it would be 17.4 inches which matches the instructions here 17.4 inches on 16 count so it means i can double check give myself a little bit more of a margin like because it's a slightly um larger count so smaller count larger stitched area confusing so I'm going to give myself 18.6 inches for the stitched area so I'm going to say 19 inches for the stitched area plus however much I then need um, for a border so because this is 26 inches across one way um, if I do minus 26 it means that I've got a 7.4 so in 26 inches 19 inch of it is stitched area and then I've got 7.4 inches of border for both sides. So divided by two would be 3.7 inches each side for border. But this is gonna crinkle, so I'm gonna mute it or speed it up or do something. So it's 26 inches, um, including the, oops, the edge salvage and the surged edge on the other side. 
so the actual stitched amount available is less so um and i think anything over three inches should be fine you have to remember though that in order to frame these uh oops let's go back to the website oops. when you look to see how much so they framed them and then probably left not quite an inch all the way around so the so normally if you were doing a full coverage you would have um if you were doing a full coverage yeah so you'd have the stitch area stitch area stitched area and then you might put the mount board or the frame right up to right up to the edge so you would be framing sort of here but because of the nature there is a little bit that's left there um i can't make any bigger oh yes i can and they've done the same here oh look at the sparkles look at the sparkles in this one how amazing this 26 inches this way this way is 36 inches so i am also considering not cutting it and just marking the center and shoving it on the frame and going with it the reason i'm saying that as well and again i'm a newbie complete newbie for scroll frames but this would be going around the scroll frame and if you've only got three inches which takes you to about here you can't see what i'm doing sorry takes you to about here if you put this round a scroll frame you might be i might be stitching here <laughs> that's no fun <laughs> so yeah i was thinking actually i think i'll forget cutting it and just put the whole thing on and worry about it later if i need to worry about it at all yeah decision made Okay, <laughs> so I've got the fabric on here. Um, I've got wing nuts. Can I show you? No. Uh, I've got wing nuts on the edges. Actually, I can. I can just pick it up. Uh, here, here, to tighten. And somewhere in this house, I've got something called a, a Twizzler. And it's a wooden block. That you use to help you screw up the wing nuts. And this thing has been, I found it in so many random places over the last couple of years and I always think oh I'll put it there because then it'll be safe and I'll, I know exactly where it is and I cannot, I cannot find it now. Utterly ridiculous so there's just no chance. Anyway this is really loose um, so I need to keep turning. So this is really wobbly. So I watched somebody say to sort of punch it. What you want, I guess, is to get the tension. You want the tension out of the rolls. Sorry, these rolls of fabric. You want not tension. What I'm talking about. You want the spare 
fabric out of here. Push it down so that you get a really loose fabric. And then you untighten these. And then what you're doing is trying to get the spare fabric out of these rolls, I guess. I found it, I found it. This is the Twizzler and kind of wing nut shaped wooden block and then the point is to because it hurts your hands get the wing nut and like i can turn that so much tighter than i could with just my hands which might really really help so i'm going to do that now i've got this one as well and this i think has come from my siesta frames stitch master and it looks pretty used so that makes sense. <laughs>